Art has had this really powerful role in society since we were doing sand paintings in Australia 60,000 years ago. It's an ability for us as humans to engage and to communicate with one another. And today, more than ever, Miami needs that. Let's just talk a little bit about community art in sure. Miami uh, today. Uh, very strong in community art. What, why is that? What, what is it about Miami that encourages that? Sure, Miami is a city that has always been in transition. It, Miami, I think of as a, as a process more than a place. During um, the Civil War, it's where the Underground Railroad slaves would come by to find refuge in the Bahamas. They came through here. The Seminoles used our wetlands. Then later, as the Caribbean Basin had political troubles, Miami was a place of refuge. When mm -hmm. you have that kind of, in, of interaction, that kind of transition coming into community, people need to speak. There needs to be an opportunity to communicate and convey the different cultural transitions, the different things that are happening in Miami. Mm -hmm. And time and time again, art has been the way where these new communities get to express themselves and address a couple of things. The diaspora, the assimilation, and the sense of building community. Miami also has a series of other issues as a community that's in transition. Uh, Miami can be a tale of two cities where there's people with immense wealth but also neighborhoods that are struggling. And again, art allows us to begin to bridge that divide. Miami has serious concerns when it comes to sea level rise and climate change. Community art allows us to see the invisible, allows us to visualize what is to come. Art has had this really powerful role in society since we were doing sand paintings in Australia 60,000 years ago. It's an ability for us as humans to engage and to communicate with one another. And today, more than ever, Miami needs that. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let, let me just uh, direct you to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, four magnificent Thank prints you. that are now hanging in the lobby here in Stora Auditorium. Can you tell us about the, uh, the conceptual process that led you to the design and the uh, uh, execution of these uh, majestic pieces? Thank you. Those are really important pieces uh, for me and I'm so honored that they're here at my alma mater. Um, they're about the four seasons, but about the four seasons shifting. And I think that's an important thing. As business students, uh, we all learn to look at systems, to look at uh, data, to look at processes, and um, to look at external factors and to be able to look at trends. Scientists have been looking at the first snow melt. They've been looking at when the leaves first come out. They've been looking at the different ways that they explore um, the seasons. And the seasons themselves are shifting due to global climate change, due to the human impacts. And I firmly believe that the answer to address the global change crisis that we're facing as a, as a nation um, resides in innovation. It resides in the things that the students at this university can do to innovate more sustainable practices across business. And that innovation can spread through the market and transform us into a green economy. So I needed to create a piece that these students would see every day of their lives that showcased both the changing or shifting seasons, and I've depicted that in each of the panels, along with data. And I put them on that, on those banners, as a way of having them look at data, look at the way that data flows into their lives, into their decision making, into how it is that they plan um, their year but also understand that that has to be informed by nature and that a sustainable business practice understands that you can't kill the goose that laid the egg. <laughs> that you need to somehow understand that there, there are systems in place where you need to have this generosity of spirit, uh, not just for your immediate bottom line, but for that bottom line years from now. And if you destroy the very nature that is making all that work, you're going to be in trouble. So it speaks really to an ethical duty that we have, mm -hmm. an ethical duty that we have to make sure that um, we uh, take enough to, uh, to allow others to also be fed at that table. And mm -hmm. that, that, that sense of justice is something that also was part of my education here mm -hmm. uh, as a master's student. So well, I'm grateful to, to, to be able to give a little bit of all, all that back.